Hello students, welcome to lecture 6 of the online course on Photonic Crystals Fundamentals and Applications. Today's lecture, we will cover the scaling properties of Maxwell's equations. Here is the lecture outline. We will first look into the macroscopic Maxwell's equation. This is basically a recap and then we will introduce this uh, scaling property of Maxwell's equations. We will discuss about discrete versus continuous frequency ranges and also we will discuss electrodynamics versus the quantum mechanics. So, macroscopic Maxwell's equations. So, we have seen that all of the macroscopic electromagnetism including the propagation of light in a photonic crystal is governed by the four macroscopic Maxwell's equation that is this set of four equations which you have been seeing over the last couple of lectures. So, quick repetition del dot E equals rho V over epsilon that is Gauss law and del dot H del dot H equals 0 that is Gauss law for magnetism. You have Faraday's laws law which is uh, written as curl of E equals minus mu dou H dot E and then you have Maxwell's ampere law which is written as curl of H equals J plus epsilon dou e dot e. So, you can also write this as dou capital D dot e right. So, here E and H are basically the macroscopic electric and magnetic fields whereas capital D okay, and B are the displacement and the magnetic induction fields. Rho and J are the free charge and the current densities. Okay. So, now we will move into the topic of scaling of Maxwell's equation. So, one interesting feature of electromagnetism in dielectric media is that there is no fundamental length scale other than the assumption that the system is macroscopic. In atomic physics, the spatial scale of the potential function is generally set by the fundamental length scale of Bohr radius. So, that is the picture of uh, Nicol Niels Bohr who was a Danish physicist and he made found foundational contributions to the understanding of atomic structure and quantum theory for which he also got the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1922. So, what I mean to say here is that in atomic physics, there is a spatial scale of the potential function and it is set by the fundamental length scale of Bohr radius. So, consequently configurations of materials that differ only in their overall spatial scale nevertheless have very different physical properties right. But for photonic crystals when you see there is no fundamental constant with the dimensions of length and the master equation is basically scale invariant. So, this is the master equation where you can see we have seen this in the previous lecture how it is obtained. So, it is curl of 1 by epsilon r times you know curl of h r will be equal to omega by c whole square h r. So, this is the master equation and this leads to simple relationships between the electromagnetic problems that differ only by a contraction or expansion of all distances. So, we will see that scaling. Scaling means you are squeezing the space or expanding the space. Okay. So, suppose for example, we have an electromagnetic eigenmode H r of frequency omega in a dielectric configuration which is given by epsilon r. Now, again we go back to the master's equation and we put all these parameters here. We know that epsilon is basically epsilon r, the eigenmode is H r and then you have got the frequency omega of the particular eigenmode. Now, suppose that the harmonic mode in a configuration of dielectric epsilon r that is just a compressed or expanded version of epsilon r. In that case, the new one you can say epsilon prime r is basically epsilon r by s where s is some scale parameter. So, let us make a change of variables in the master equation where we consider r prime is equal s r and del prime is basically del by s. So, if you do that you can actually 
write everything in terms of uh, you know so this nabla or del operator can be written as del prime times s so s del prime like this okay this one can be replaced by this okay so it is basically epsilon so r is basically r prime by s okay so on so this is how the new master equation looks like which is again reproduced here from the previous slide so here you can carefully see that epsilon r prime s is none other than epsilon prime r prime right so if you put that you know dividing out throughout by s prime you will see that you actually obtain this particular equation where s actually enters into this particular uh, omega term so there you can rewrite your equation okay in the normal form by considering h prime r prime as a new parameter which is basically this one okay h function of r prime by s okay and you consider a new frequency omega prime which is basically omega by s so what it means that the new mode profile and its corresponding frequency can be obtained by simply scaling the old you know mode profile and its frequency so this is what you are doing right so the solution of the problem at one length scale determines the solution at all other length scale so that's something amazing so we again you know put this equation here and we can state this important observation that the solution of the problem at one length scale determines the solution at all other length scales this simple fact is of considerable practical importance right for example the microfabrication of uh, complex micron scale photonic crystals can be quite different and difficult but models can be easily made for testing purpose and you can test those in microwave regime which is at a much larger you know length scale typically of the order of centimeters if uh, materials can be found that have nearly same dielectric constant at uh, both those frequency range and that is where if you remember that the first uh, experimental demonstration of uh, photonic crystal was done in the microwave range so these considerations guarantee that the model will have the same electromagnetic properties so just as there is no fundamental length scale there is also no fundamental value of the dielectric constant so suppose the harmonic modes of a system with dielectric configuration epsilon r and the modes of a system with dielectric configuration that differs by a constant everywhere okay so that you can write epsilon prime r is nothing but epsilon r over s square okay so here the parameter is s square so now if you substitute s square epsilon prime r instead of epsilon r in the master equation you will see that you actually obtain this so what you are doing you actually have this s square and you are pushing that into this particular omega term so what do you conclude from here you can see that the harmonic mode hr of this new system remains unchanged but what has changed the corresponding frequency got scaled by a factor of s so the new frequency you can write as omega prime which is basically s omega and that happens when you know the dielectric constant get a scale by this kind of factor so this is what numerically we can understand that if we multiply the dielectric constant everywhere by a factor of 1 by 4 so what will happen that's like s equals 2 right if you do that calculation from here the mode patterns will remain unchanged but their frequency will become 2 omega that is the frequencies will double thus if we scale epsilon by s square and also rescale the coordinates by s so what will happen in that case in that case the frequency will remain unchanged 
So, this is something like called the simple scaling invariance is a special case of more generalized you know coordinate transformation. So, this is an important observation that if you scale the permittivity by s square and then rescale the coordinates by s your frequencies will remain unchanged. And we will see you know coordinate transformation later, later in this course, but you see that in coordinate transformation you can actually you know um, any any material from one coordinate system can be translated or transformed into another shape or coordinate system by replacing the values of uh, epsilon and mu. So, it turns out that any coordinate transformation can be replaced simply by a change of epsilon and mu while keeping the omega fixed. And this can be a very powerful conceptual tool because it allows one to wrap and distort a structure in complicated ways while retaining a similar form of the Maxwell's equation. However, in general this kind of change in epsilon and mu is not just a mere uh, multiplication rather you have to deal with Jacobian matrix and all those things we will we'll see uh, later on in this course. But just remember that the change is not simply multiplying you know uh, epsilon and mu by a constant it is slightly more rigorous than that. Now, let us look into you know where you see discrete where you see continuous frequency ranges. So, frequency ranges are important when you want to study the spectrum of a photonic crystal right and the spectrum of a photonic crystal is the totality of all the eigenvalues omega. So, what does this spectrum look like? Is it a continuous range of values like a rainbow or do the frequencies form discrete sequence something like omega naught, omega 1 dot 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 and so on ok like the vibrational frequencies of a uh, piano string. The answer is uh, it depends on the spatial domain of the mode profile ok h of r that is the vector magnetic field or electric field ok. So, if the fields are spatially bounded either because they are localized around a particular point or because they are periodic in all three dimensions ok and therefore, represent a bounded profile which is repeated indefinitely then the frequencies omega form a discrete set. Otherwise, they can form a single continuous range a set of continuous values or a combination of continuous ranges and discrete sets something like for combination of localized and extended modes. So, an intuitive explanation for the relation between the bounded special domain of the Eigen modes and the discreteness of the uh, frequency spectrum is discussed here. So, let us suppose that we have a continuous range of Eigen values. So, that we can vary the frequency omega continuously and get some Eigen mode which is expressed as h omega r for each of this frequency omega. So, we can now argue that this continuum cannot be the spectrum of the spatially bounded modes and it is reasonable to suppose that as we change omega continuously the field h omega can be made to change continuously as well. So, that any arbitrarily small amount of change that is delta omega will also have a corresponding small change in the vector field delta h. So, any drastic difference in the field would uh, correspond to a very different value of the electromagnetic energy functional and hence of the frequency. So, on the other hand you will see that two specially bounded modes h and h plus delta h they are arbitrarily similar ok cannot also be orthogonal. So, if you take the inner product ok which will be uh, inner product of h h plus delta h comma delta. So, here the first term is positive and the second term is arbitrarily small for integration over a finite domain that is where a system has got 
specially bounded modes. So, thus the continuous spectrum is basically incompatible with the required orthogonalities of the modes unless the modes are unbounded spatial extent. So, what happens you know when you compute this spectrum we understood that you know you get discrete ranges fine. So, you try to find out the propagation of electromagnetic modes in photonic crystal and that is where you can also try to draw an analogy between electrodynamics and quantum mechanics. Okay. So, as we mentioned the main soul heart and soul of the photonic crystal is basically about the propagation of electromagnetic wave in a dielectric medium. So, in a sense quantum mechanics is also a study of wave pro propagation although the waves are a bit more abstract in that case. So, there you know at the atomic scale particles such as electrons began to display wave like properties including interference and non localization and that function contains the information about the particle okay, obeying the Schrodinger's equation which bears some sort of resemblance to the wave equation that is there for the photonic crystal. But it therefore comes as no surprise that the study of quantum mechanics in periodic potential contains direct parallels to our study of electromagnetism in periodic dielectric medium. So, since the quantum mechanics of periodic potential is the basic theory of solid state physics, the field of photonic crystal can also inherit some of the theorems and terminologies of the solid state physics in a slightly modified form. In quantum mechanics, the lowest energy eigenstates typically have the amplitude of the wave function concentrated in the regions of low potential. While in electrodynamics, the lowest modes have the have their electric energy uh, concentrated in the regions of high dielectric constant. Both of these statements are made quantitative by a variational theorem, which have been discussed also in the previous lecture. So, finally, you can see that in quantum mechanics, there is usually a fundamental length scale that prevents us from relating solutions to potential that differ by a scale factor. But on the other hand, electrodynamics is basically free from any such length scale. So, the solutions that we obtain can be easily scaled up or scaled down in length scale and frequency. So, these are the you know differences between electrodynamics and quantum mechanics. But then there are some similarities as well because in with quantum mechanics there are similarities between the formulation of electrodynamics in dielectric media and the quantum me mechanics of non-interacting electrons. So, if you tabulate those you can see that how do you express field in quantum mechanics and this is how you express field in electrodynamics they have very similar form ok. This is the wave equation or potential this is the potential function ok and this is the magnetic vector field eigenvalue problem can be written like this here it is written as this one that is also a eigenvalue problem and the Hermitian operator is basically the Hamiltonian ok in the case of quantum mechanics and this is the form of this operator theta cap in case of electrodynamics. So, in both cases we decompose the field into harmonic modes that oscillate with the phase factor of e to the power minus i omega t that is correct. In quantum mechanics the wave equation the wave function in quantum mechanics the wave function is a complex scalar field whereas in electrodynamic the magnetic field is a real vector and the complex exponential is just a mathematical convenience. So, in both the cases the modes of the systems are basically determined by a Hermitian eigenvalue equation. In quantum mechanics the frequency omega is related to the eigenvalue that is h equals e equals h, h bar omega which is meaningful only up to an overall additive constant of v naught that is the potential ok. 
However, in electrodynamics, the eigenvalue is proportional to the square of the frequency and there is no arbitrary additive constant. So, one difference which is apparent from this com comparison is that in quantum mechanics, the Hamiltonian is separable if Vr is separable. So, it comes here, okay, fine. So, rest all form, it looks very much similar in uh, quantum mechanics and electrodynamics. So, if you take an example of Vr as a sum of one dimensional vectors okay, or functions, sorry. For example, if uh, you consider Vr as sum of one dimensional functions like Vxx plus Vyy plus Vzz, then we can write psi, the wave function as a product of psi r given as xx, yy and zz. Okay? And the problem separates into three more manageable problem, one for each direction. Right? In electrodynamics, such a factorization is generally not possible because the differential operator theta cap couples the different coordinates even if you know epsilon r is separable. So, this makes you know analytical solutions pretty rare in case of uh, electrodynamics and generally those analytical solutions are com confined to very very simple systems. So, let us compare electrodynamics and quantum mechanics in more details okay, uh, in different aspects. So, what is the key function that contains all of the information in quantum mechanics okay, in a periodic potential which can be thought of a crystal, the answer is the scalar wave function psi r t. Okay? And if you consider electromagnetism in a periodic dielectric which is basically a photonic crystal, the key function that contains all the information is magnetic vector field which is given as h r t. How do you separate the time dependence of the function from the spatial dependence? So, the way in quantum mechanics is expand in a set of energy eigenstates. So, you can write psi r t in this particular form where the spatial and time dependence can be separated. In electromagnetism also, you can expand in a set of harmonic modes which are basically frequency eigenstates and you can have h omega r though that is for particularly for particular frequency. Okay, that is why they are called frequency eigenstates and then you have the time dependence separated out. Now, what is the master equation that determines the eigenstates of the system? In the case of quantum mechanics, it is the Schrodinger's equation and this is how it is written. So, this is the h cap uh, parameter in Schrodinger's equation and this is the Maxwell's equation in case of electromagnetism and this is the master equation that you have all seen. Are there any other condition on the key function? Yes, the scalar wave field must be normalizable. Okay? And in case of electromagnetism, yes, the vector field must be both normalizable and transverse. So, del dot h should be equal to 0. What does the periodicity, where does, where does the periodicity of the system enter? So, in quantum mechanics, it enters through the potential. So, V r is basically written as V r plus capital R where you know this is for all lattice vectors at position capital R. right? And in case of uh, photonic crystal electrodynamics, the periodicity enters through the dielectric function. So, you can write epsilon r is basically epsilon small r plus capital R for all the lattice vectors capital R. Is there any inter interaction between normal modes? Yes. In quantum mechanics, there is an electron-electron repulsive interaction that makes large-scale computation difficult. And in electromagnetism, in the linear regime, the electromagnetic modes do not interact, so you can calculate them independently. What important properties do the normal modes have in common? In quantum mechanics, eigenstates with different energies are orthogonal. They have real eigenvalues and can be found through a variational principle. Whereas, in case of uh, electromagnetism in photonic crystal, okay, 
you can say the modes with different frequencies are also orthogonal they have non-negative real eigenvalues and they also can be found through variational principle what are the properties of the master equation that guarantee that these properties of the normal modes okay so in quantum mechanics it is basically the hamiltonian h cap is a linear hermitian operator and in the case of electromagnetism the maxwell operator which is theta cap this part okay theta cap okay is a linear positive semi definite hermitian operator so you can actually see what is you know maxwell operator theta cap now Going further, what is the variational theorem that is used to determine the normal modes and frequencies? So, you can see this is E var which is the inner product of psi h cap psi over psi psi okay, is minimized when psi is the eigenstate of h cap. So, this is how you can actually use the variational theorem. So, for electromagnetism it is basically you know the electromagnetic energy u var can be obtained as inner product of h theta cap h over h h okay inner product of h mm, is minimized when this h is in eigenstate of theta cap what is the heuristic that goes along with the variational theorem so the wave function concentrates in potential well without oscillating too fast while maintaining orthogonal to lower energy states in case of electrodynamics the electromagnetic fields concentrate their energy in high permittivity region again without oscillating too fast while maintaining orthogonal to the lower frequency modes so what is the physical energy of the system the eigenvalue e of the hamiltonian that gives you the physical energy of the system in case of uh, electrodynamics the time and average electromagnetic energy u is obtained like that okay so you take the modular square of the electric field and the magnetic field and you know take the volume integration and that you get it is there a natural length scale to the system usually in case of uh, quantum mechanics there is the physical constraints such as Bohr radius will set that length scale and in photonic crystal in electrodynamics there is no such uh, length scale so the solutions are generally scale free so what is the mathematical statement that says a is the symmetry of the system okay you can say that a cap commutes with the Hamiltonian so you can write this as 0 and in electrodynamics also you can say a commutes with the Maxwell's operator so this also becomes zero how do you use the symmetries of the system to classify the eigenstates so in quantum mechanics you can distinguish them by how they transform under a symmetry operation of a cap and the same happen in case of electrodynamics as well now if the system has a discrete translational symmetry as the crystal does how can the modes be classified now that is something interesting and that is applicable for both um, electromagnetics as well as quantum mechanics by wave vector k you can do it so you write the wave function in block block form okay so you can write psi k r equals u k r e to the power i k r so this is where the you know periodicity comes in okay you can also write the harmonic modes in case of electrodynamics as h k r equals u k r e to the power i k r so it is very very similar what you do in quantum mechanics and what you do in electrodynamics so what are the non redundant values for the wave vector k okay they basically lie in the no irreducible brilliant zone in reciprocal space and the same concept is applied here so you only need to actually study the irreducible brilliant zone to obtain the information of the band diagram and all so that will drastically minimize your computational requirements 
can also further compare them okay in terms of what do you mean by the term band structure so the functions e and k which is a set of continuous function that specify the energies of the eigenstates so band structure basically tells you about the energies of the eigenstates in electromagnetism you can use the function omega and k a set of continuous functions that also tells you about the frequencies of the harmonic modes so there it's eigenstates energies of the eigenstates here is the frequency of the harmonic modes what is the physical origin of the band structure in quantum mechanics in normal crystal is the electron wave scatters coherently from different potential regime right in electromagnetic it is basically the electromagnetic fields scatter coherently at the interface between different dielectric interface or dielectric region so that is how here what different potential region is doing here different dielectric region is emulating the same what properly characterizes a gap in the band structure so it tells you that within that range of energies there are no propagating electron states regardless of the wave vector so in any direction propagation is not allowed in electromagnetism in photonic crystal it also means the same that within that range of frequencies there are no propagating electromagnetic modes regardless of the wave vector or polarization so there is something additional over here polarization so that makes this vector and this is a scalar thing you are talking about the wave potential which is scalar you are talking about magnetic vector potential that is where the polarization gets into picture what are the terms for bands that are immediately above and below a band gap so for semiconductor crystal you know that those are conduction band which is above the gap and the one below is valence band okay in case of photonic crystal the band above is called air band and the band which is below the gap is called the dielectric band so how are the defects introduced in the system so in uh, normal crystal in quantum mechanics you can see that uh, by adding foreign atoms to the crystals you can break the translational symmetry of the atomic potential and that is how you can introduce defects and in case of photonic crystal by changing the dielectric constant of a particular location you are again breaking the translational symmetry of the dielectric function and that is how you can introduce a defect what is the possible result of introducing a defect so in crystals it may create an allowed state within a band gap therefore permitting a localized electron state to exist in the vicinity of the defect and it is very similar what happens in photonic crystal also so there also it actually creates an allowed state within the gap so you are actually permitting a localized electromagnetic mode to exist in the vicinity of the defect so how do you classify different types of defects so in crystals you can think of donor atoms which pull states from conduction band down into the gap and you can also have acceptor atoms which push states from the valence band up into the gap and that is how you know defects um, affect your crystal band diagram in case of photonic crystal if you have dielectric defects they they also do the same thing they pull states from the air band into the gap and if you have air defects they push states uh, from the dielectric band up into the so this is very important what do you want to do okay always remember the band that is above the gap is called air band and the band that is below the gap is called the dielectric band so in short what is studying the physics of the system why is in short why is studying the physics of the system important so we need to know the system well to tailor the electronic properties of the materials to our need and we do the same thing in case of photonic crystal so that we can tailor the electromagnetic property or optical property of the material to our needs so with that we come to a conclusion to this lecture 
So, we will start the discussion on symmetries for classification of EM modes in the next lecture. If you have got any queries regarding this particular lecture, you can always drop an email to me mentioning MOOC and Photonic Crystal on the subject line and this is my email address dev.shikdar at itg.ac.in. Thank you. Thank you.